Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're asking yourself 16 questions to figure out our 16 personalities personality type. So if you are wondering what personality type you are, I'd say ask yourself these questions. They will give you a comprehensive insight into how you think, who you are, how you developed, and how you came to be who you are today. And if you don't know the answer after watching these questions, feel free to send in, record your answers, and send me the video as an unlisted YouTube video to patreon.com slash and I'm happy to help you figure out and understand yourself a little bit better. Now, question number one that you should start with is, what is your earliest childhood memory? Try to think back in time. What is the earliest thing that you remember from your life? Now think to yourself, why was that such an important moment in your life? Think about core memories like this, because most people tend to have core memories in their life that actively shaped your own self-concept and who you are. And you can think of it from two perspectives. First, of course, the question is, how did this memory and this experience come to shape me and who I am today? And second of all, why was this an important memory? Because perhaps this was an important memory because it said something, it taught you something about who you are as a person, right? Now, question number two to ask yourself is, how would your parents or family members or siblings have described you as a kid? Like, what were the first things that people noticed in you when you were growing up? Was it your high enthusiasm? Was it uh, how positive you were? Was it how quiet you were? Was it how calm you were? What kind of qualities did people most remember with you? For example, for me, most people associated with me with being calm and positive. I was always happy and I was always completely calm and completely <laughs> relaxed, like a stoic philosopher born from the cradle. <laughs> now, question number three that you might want to ask yourself is, what were some of the earliest skills that you sh started showing? Like, did, was there some kind of hobby or interest that you got really good at as a kid? What kind of thing was that? For me, for example, that was reading. I read really fast and I read a lot. So I got really book smart <laughs> because I read a lot, because I studied a lot, because I was very curious. I got into things very quickly. Can you tell or imagine yourself, like, what did you do as a kid? Like, what was some of the first hobbies or skills that you started going really hardcore about? And why do you think those were so interesting to you? And how do you think that shaped you and who you are? Question number four is, what were some weaknesses that you had as a kid? <laughs> some things that you did as a kid that your parents struggled with, that your teachers struggled with, that your siblings found annoying about you, right? These can be, like, things that you found difficult to learn, things that you had problems with a lot growing up, like, things that you felt were uh, deficiencies in yourself, right? So, for example, for me, I struggled to remember to close doors. <laughs> I almost never closed the door. <laughs> I just kept all doors open. The cat escaped multiple times because I had kept the door open. So it took me a while to figure out, you know, these kind of basic routines like, oh yeah, closing the door when you leave the house or remembering to, you know, uh, close the refrigerator door when you open it, like these kind of things. Those were very difficult for me as a kid. I knew how to open the doors earlier, but I didn't know how to close them. Number five, as you started to go grow more into your own person, you know, because most, you know, kids, they have this stage in their life when they go from being babies, where, you know, where they're just babies, you know, to being people, where you're like, this is a person, right? Like, what started to happen when you started to find like your earliest sense of self, right? Because probably your sense of self has evolved over time through multiple times. But think back to the time where you started to become like uh, an actual person with your own personality. What were some things that you started challenging your parents on? Like perhaps what were some things that you started questioning your parents on? Things that you didn't agree with, things that you said no to, things that you didn't want to do, even though they told you to, right? Because when people are bold enough to start standing up to their parents about something, that's when you can start seeing that this is a person with their own identity, their own needs, and their own willpower, right? So, yeah. Um, can you think of a moment where you stood up to your parents? And what was the situation? What was the thing that you were upset about? What were things that you started to question very early? For me, I started questioning teachers. And I started questioning my parents often on moral issues. So. I questioned my dad on smoking and I started hiding his cigarettes. I questioned my mom on being on the phone so much. I questioned my parents, uh, sorry, my teachers on when I thought they were being bad teachers or when they weren't <laughs> like earning their respect as teachers, like when they were being immature in some way when I thought they should have been, you know, I don't know, just <laughs> better as teachers, right? Can you think of anything you stood up about early and what was it? Now, after that, what you might want to ask yourself is, uh, once you started hitting your teenager years, you know, in your development, like when you started becoming more of a teenager and like, 
starting to go out into your own way? Like, what were some subjects in school that you did really well in? And conversely, what were some subjects you were really struggling with? And how can you relate that to personality? Did you notice that you had an interest in a certain subject or in a certain hobby? Or what was that interest and why was that so interesting to you? And did you have any subjects you really struggled with and why was that? You know, of course, if it was a bad teacher, of course, that can kill your motivation. But if, you know, you can tell that, you know, I had a passion for this subject because it was really interesting to me and it was one of the first topics that I was really good at. Well, for me, the l skill that I was the best at in school was most likely languages. So I was really good at languages. I learned them fast and I was very good, particularly in Swedish writing, of course, because I started writing early because I read a lot. And so I had a quite good vocabulary because of that, right? So language for me was a really key skill. Now, of course, conversely, what was a bad subject? Well, I'd say for me, like the subject that I was uh, most likely the worst at was probably maths or physics. And it was not necessarily that I was bad in these subjects because I could get a good grade in them if I really liked and I enjoyed this intellectual stimulation around it. But I often found them very dry and boring. <laughs> so it was hard for me to stay consistently motivated. And I often had struggles with my maths teachers uh, because they were always trying to tell me how to do maths when I felt like I had my own way of doing it. <laughs> and I felt like, yeah, that caused a lot of conflicts. Um, but uh, maths and physics were probably my weakest areas. Uh, you might think, oh, a PE, but actually I was really good at orientation. So running around in the woods, finding spots, navigating different spots. Like, <laughs> yeah, I actually had some areas in PE where I was quite, quite okay. Um, individual sports I did pretty well in, but team sports, not so much. Um, now, uh, another question you might want to ask yourself is, uh, what uh, was your first relationship like? And what kind of person did you stay date? And what was the kind of uh, guy or girl that you got really interested in? And uh, how did that shape you? Because often they say like your first relationship can really shape what you uh, are drawn to, what you're interested in in the future, uh, and how you compare yourself to other relationships in the future. But it can also be in the sense that uh, it says something about what kind of people you like to have in your life, right? So the question is here, what kind of partners do you find yourself consistently searching for and why do you find yourself constantly seeking these kinds of partners? What do you hope, what do you admire about them? What do you like about them? What kind of thing do you tend to, what kind of things tend to draw you in? Conversely, ask yourself, what kind of friends do I tend to end up with? Like what kind of people do I tend to befriend very easily? Why do they tend to be easy to talk to? And what kind of things do I tend to enjoy about them? If you can find out these kind of things, you can often find out a lot about yourself because it can address and show voids in your life or it might showcase, for example, similar interests, because if you know what they are like, and if you know that you're similar, and if you know that you both share those similar hobbies, well, that can teach you a lot about yourself, because if you look at them, who they are, you might learn who you are, right? Now, after you uh, left high school, you know, what was it you did after that? Did you go straight into work, or did you go uh, continue studying? For example, my, my first question in this would be, did you have any extracurriculars, right? Because for example, did you get involved in a student council? Did you have any like sports that you did outside of school? Did you have any hobbies? Were you in a chess club? Were you like, uh, what did you do outside of school? Did you often spend a lot of time outside or did you spend a lot of time with other people or did you spend a lot of time by yourself? And what did you enjoy about doing those things? For me, I was active in different organizations, politics. I often liked leading different groups and I liked, uh, you know, uh, my non-profit work and contributing to the world and politics in some way. So that was very interesting to me, right? Pause that. Uh, what did you do after high school? Did you choose to study or did you go into a practical field or did you take a sabbat or did you do something? What did you do after high school? Did you, uh, what did you choose to study? How did that go for you? Did you enjoy it? Did you struggle? Did you change your subjects a lot? Did you keep studying in the same thing? Uh, did you go straight into work and what kind of work did you pick and how did you end up there? Like these kind of questions are quite interesting because they also show a lot about your development route and how you chose to, you know, work around with what you got and what kind of opportunities that you picked and how you respond to that. Like did you start noticing in uh, university that you kept changing your subjects a lot, switching from different fields, finding it difficult to choose a major. Do you find yourself, uh, you know, uh, going straight into work but not really enjoying it or did you find yourself getting into a job directly and did you stay there for a long time and did you excel there and like kept going there for a really long time or what did you do right and how did you end up there and what uh, did you enjoy about it and what did you dislike about it because often you know 
I think we can't really know our personal type if we can't look at ourselves in real life situations, right? So we have to compare and think back to things that we have done and experienced and how they made us feel, right? So for example, you might imagine, for example, when you got to work and you started working, that might have been really challenging for you, right? It might have been extremely stressful. You might have experienced a lot. You might have uh, been into some difficult situations. You might have been really confronted with some of your weaknesses as a person, some of your difficulties, and you might have, you know, because you had to work long hours or for bad pay, or you had to do a lot at the same time, get, move out, you know, take care of your finances, do a lot of these things, right? So it might have been really overwhelming, right? What kind of a person were you like in those kind of high stress situations where you were confronted with these major life transitions, right? How did you deal with those things? What were the most difficult things about those kind of transitions for you? And what kind of things did you really, really struggle with? What kind of things were really easy for you? Like, because you probably had some things that were really easy for you too. Some things that you ended up doing really well and some things that worked out really well for you that other kids your age really struggled with, right? And so can you see any of those things? After you started settling in at work and uh, like, uh, found your subject in school, and uh, university, or postgrad, or whatever you ended up doing, right? What was the thing that you started noticing was your true superpower? Because most likely, people tend to discover their true superpower when they're like 25. For example, I discovered my superpower was communication. I was really good at delivering a message to other people. I was often a spokesperson in different organizations. I studied rhetoric and communication in university, and I seemed really good at it. And I started here really finding out that, okay, if there's anything I can do, it's express my thoughts and turn them to words. And so that was my key skill, emotional management, uh, learning to manage my own emotions and to get myself to, you know, if I was upset, become calm or happy, you know, like these kind of things. Like that have been constantly a thing in my life and communicating through language. You know, I was really good at Swedish and here in particular, I was good at writing, right? Creating stories that were enjoyable for myself and others, right? And uh, I, I got into YouTube, you know, starting doing videos. So like often I think when you're like 25, 30 ish, that's when you really start knowing, okay, this is something I'm really good at. This is my core skill. This is something that I've gotten exceptionally good at, right? And now you can ask yourself, what does that say about me? You know, right? why did I like, what did I learn from that, right? Now, a question to ask yourself now is like, what kind of uh, end goal are you currently working towards? Like, do you have any goals that you're currently working towards achieving? Is there something, some kind of dream in your head that you're trying to get to? And what is that dream? And what is it you're trying to work towards? And here, what you're trying to figure out is what your ideal is. What is it? What is your ideal version of yourself? What is it that you ideally like to do? What is a dream you keep coming back to? It doesn't have to be that one dream, but what is one dream that you keep coming back to? It can be the first thing you think of when I ask you this question. It can be you know, something that you have dreamt about a lot, but do you know if you want it or not, but you have thought about it a lot, right? What is that thing? Conversely, you can ask yourself, what is my hell look like? You know, what, what is my absolute worst case scenario, the least enjoyable thing I could imagine myself doing. The thing that I would hate the most of all, right? Think about that. Think about like, what is the, the number one thing you'd absolutely never want to do, the worst case scenario for you, like the thing that you really would not like. Because if you can understand what your hell looks like, you can also imagine, of course, in that case, what uh, you really struggle with and what some things, what things that are really difficult for you. And now to wrap it all together, the question is, what are you like in a flow state? Think back to a time when you really enjoyed yourself, when you're really motivated, really confident, and really calm, really in your comfort zone, right? So imagine a thing, an activity you were doing where you holding a speech, where you do, uh, doing something at work, where you uh, hanging out with friends, where you're doing some kind of hobby, and you just found yourself in that optimal state where you felt like your brain was working at 100%, like you were nailing it, right? You were doing amazing. And what was that time? And what, how did it feel to be in that state? And what was it you were doing specifically when you got into that state? Because there are triggers that put you in a flow state. There are specific events and times and things that inspire people. Certain words can get people to immediately spark up and get interested. Certain actions and activities can get the person to get really curious and really energized. Certain events and experiences and values that really trigger people. Conversely, what are some things that tend to demotivate you? What are things that tend to kill your enthusiasm right away? Things that tend to get you to lose energy, things that you find very taxing and draining, things that you feel very bad at, things that you struggle with, things you don't feel confident in at all, things that you find bad or wrong, or things that you tend to say, oh, people shouldn't be like that, people shouldn't do that, that's not right, that's not good, right? What are some, 
of those like things that you feel are absolutely killing for your confidence, your comfort, and your happiness and well-being. So yeah, those are my 16 questions to figure out your personal type. I'll also summarize them down below. Feel free to record yourself answering these questions and maybe ask your friends and family members what they would type you as based on those answers. But most of all, take the lessons that you learned from just answering these questions. Take and recognize that even if you can't decide your personal type, you can learn a lot from these answers about yourself. And of course, if you want my help, check out patreon.com slash ericdora, links also down below. And uh, feel free to send me your video as an unlisted video. As a patron, I'm happy to help you figure out and get some insights into your personal type and who you are and what your key dominant strengths seem to be. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.